Bunch of BMW GSs over here. Wonder if any of them know me. <laughs> oh wait, there's just one. Oh, there's two. There's a second guy. I'm not gonna go say anything. <laughs> Feels good to be back. I'm rolling. Got this bike loaded up. I'm gonna go camping. Whew, it's the first time I've been on dirt in like three months. So I'm gonna take it slow. So don't give me any any shit about it. Well, if you missed the exhaust comparison video, um, I kind of explained where I've been. I took like three months off from making videos because I just didn't really feel like it. I realized if I don't feel like making the content, it just isn't going to be good content. And that's not what I want to do. You know, I do this because I want to create something that's good and entertaining that you like. That's, that's what satisfies me from this. So I just took a bunch of time off and just didn't, didn't even look at it. I didn't even ride this bike once, actually. And I think the last time I went camping, I was talking about having a feeling of low confidence. And I think that might have actually played a role in it, too. Because I realized, it's like, if you're, if you're climbing a mountain and you're thinking about falling, guess what's going to happen? Like, you're probably going to fall. And I, I was kind of getting to the point where I'd come out to these places and I'd ride two hours to get to a location. And I'd go out in the woods to camp. And, like, I, I couldn't, I was struggling to enjoy it because... I was thinking about all of the things that could go wrong and I realized the more I think about things that can go wrong the more likely things are to go wrong so a big part of this has to do with you know how you feel and uh, I just I, I guess I just one of the reasons I stopped for a while was because I just needed a break because I wasn't I just didn't feel like I should be writing even so I think it's important to think about that stuff and all of us are motorcycle riders I imagine if you're here you probably ride a bike so, uh, you know, listen to your gut, man. Listen to your feelings. And if, you don't, if you're not feeling it or you don't feel like riding, maybe you shouldn't. I just think that's probably something to consider. So anyway, that's where I've been. Um, other news, uh, I used to try to make videos every week. And I don't think I'm going to do that anymore. I think it's not sustainable anymore. I've been doing this for like three years. And it's just not, it's hard to, it's hard to do that. not where I'm turning I'm turning up here it's hard to do that and like keep a like a normal family life like I need to have time on the weekends to spend with my wife and, and like spend doing things like backpacking and hiking because I like those things but if I'm out filming more and editing more it just makes it all more difficult it makes it more difficult to manage so instead of doing a video every week I think what I'm gonna try to do is just do a camping video once a month that way, the only content coming onto this channel will be the very best that I do. And uh, hopefully the quality goes up, even if the consistency or the frequency goes down. Hopefully the videos will be better and uh, I'll be more refreshed when I do them. I'll probably be in a better mood. So yeah, I think that's, a, that's probably a good um, obtainable goal for me to focus on this year. So today I'm actually coming out here 
to camp in the desert because it's cool enough here in Arizona to come to the desert and camp right now. Kind of missed my window earlier this year, so I'm trying to hit some spots out here and uh, before it starts to get really warm. So I'm riding down this road to a spot that I found on my map, and we're just going to have to stop and check the map when I see some turnoffs to see if uh, I'm near it. I wanted to camp in a wash, which is like an empty riverbed, and uh, just because sand is kind of comfortable to camp on. I've never camped in a wash. I don't, I don't know. It should be kind of neat, something different. <laughs> so hopefully we can make that happen. I don't know. It's been raining a lot, so I'm a little worried about mud situations, and I'm not sure if a wash would actually contain water right now. So we'll, that'll be a deciding factor. <laughs> also, if it's not, if it's not raining or anything, which I don't think it's going to. It wasn't in the forecast, and uh, if I'm feeling it, I might just not sleep in my tent tonight. I might put the ground tarp down and just sleep on the ground, which I've never done before, ever. So, other news, I have ordered t-shirts. Uh, I had people go on Instagram and vote for the t-shirt designs that I came up with, and the two winners have been ordered. They are the ones that said, uh, you weren't born to pay bills and die, and then there's the one with the... Uh, XR650L in the woods. Those are the two I'm making. I'm making 50 of each. I didn't know what sizes to order. I realized I forgot to ask people to tell me what sizes they were. <laughs> so I kind of guessed. I, I went through the Instagram pages of the guys that voted and a lot of them were larges. Or they looked like they would have been a large. So I ordered uh, mostly larges. Uh, it's the first round of shirts. So I mean, uh, I'll be ordering more of course. Go to buy one and you don't have your size there. Just let me know. and. When I reorder, I'll make sure I uh, add a you know a percentage of those in your size because I really I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to make cool T-shirts forever, and I worked really hard on these, and I want I just thought I'd, I'd make a shirt that I would want to wear, so I, I hope you guys like them. But anyway, those should be available Thursday, so the Thursday after this is uploaded, those shirts should come in, and I should I'm gonna put them on eBay as quickly as possible. So uh, check back on this video and use the link below to go to the eBay store where I will be selling those. They are going to be $24.95 a piece. Took a good spot here for some pictures. See, I'm in a good mood today. Ugh, this bike is hard to get off of. Something else I was thinking about on my way here was would any of you local guys be interested in like a little group ride? Because I tried doing that once and nobody really came through. But I was thinking, uh, bike night's coming up. It might be cool if I like pack up my bike like this and we all ride together and I go to, we go to bike night and hang out and talk and talk about camping and dual sports and check out some sweet motorcycles. I don't know. I just was thinking I want to go to bike night this year and check out bikes. I haven't been there in forever. Um, I'm thinking of going to the one at Westgate. I think that's the main one. But let me know in the comments if you're a guy that lives around here that would want to do a little group ride with me. Probably on the road. I'm not, I'm not thinking about doing like a dirt ride all day and then going to bike night. I'm thinking about just meeting up and doing a little cruise into the uh, into Westgate and just hanging out. So let me know. So what else have I been doing? Well, this year, my wife and her friends are doing challenges every month where they have to do so many of whatever. Like, uh, in January, it was no eating out at all. And so every time someone cheated, they had to put a dollar in a jar, and the person that cheated the most has to add an extra $10. And then February was no alcohol, like no drinking at all. So it was like a totally dry month. And I learned some stuff about myself, I think when doing that and I learned a little bit about happiness I think oddly enough so like I drink I mean before this I was drinking a pretty significant amount I mean I was drinking every night unless I had something else going on like I had to go somewhere or drive somewhere or see people or if I was working on my motorcycle I wouldn't drink or if I was uh, working on my truck or something like that you know general activities but otherwise if I was home I'd be drinking Oh, there's a mud pit. Not gonna f with that. Sorry, guys. And I knew it was a lot. 
of drinking. I knew I probably shouldn't drink that much, but I was like, well, I like it. And, uh, you know, I feel okay, so I'm just going to keep doing it. But I was excited to do a sober month because I wanted to see how my body and my mind handled that. Because when I quit smoking cigarettes, I found that it was more of a habit than anything else. Like, the physical dependency of smoking went away in, like, two weeks. And the hardest part was actually just getting in the car and not having a cigarette or eating a meal and then not having a cigarette. Like the hardest part was all of these rituals I had built in my life around cigarettes that made me feel like I was relaxing. It was all in my head. And I never realized that. Like the, the tobacco addiction is mostly in your head. So I thought, I wonder if alcohol is, uh, is actually gonna be like that. And it was, at least for me anyway. Maybe. I wasn't consuming enough to have a physical dependency. I was, I mean, I was looking for, uh, that might be one of my turns, I don't know. I was looking for signs of withdrawal, and I didn't have any. Sorry, for some reason my map is not loading my, uh, the points that I marked. It's been doing that. Oh, there it is. All right, this is it. I gotta go pee though. So anyway, I uh, I struggled like the first week because you know I had the I had associated drinking with relaxing, and so I'd come home from work and I would want one, and uh, I couldn't have one and it bothered me. But after that first week, it really wasn't bad. The main thing I found that me and my wife both struggled with was on Friday nights. We would come home from work and we'd be in good moods and we would want to drink together. Now that's interesting because it's situational. It's not about the alcohol itself. It's about the mood that we're in and the experience we're going to have by hanging out together and watching a movie and having a few drinks together. So anyway, yesterday was March 1st. There's a camp spot right there. <laughs> I don't really want it though. So anyway, yesterday was March 1st, and uh, got some alcohol, got some whiskey, got monkey shoulder, which I'm super excited to tell you guys about, and I had a few of them, and today I felt like shit, and I thought, you know what, like, we were just drinking alone last night, like, it wasn't, it wasn't the experience that I, you know, kind of was looking for, <laughs> it wasn't the experience I remembered from like a month ago, <laughs> I realized, I think, been doing it wrong you know it's like when you drink every day and it becomes a habit it's just it's just a ritual you've associated with you think you want to come home and relax and so you think having a drink is gonna you know help that because drinking makes you feel good alcohol is nice it tastes good it's wonderful <laughs> um, and then you just get used to it when in reality you're chasing experiences you've had you know like you have whiskey with four of your best friends and you guys get drunk and laugh and tell stories. That's a great time. And you have that memory and you associate it with whiskey. Not necessarily your friends and the social setting. So I guess the point I'm trying to make is like I feel like I've been doing it wrong. So that's kind of where happiness comes into this because I realized drinking with my wife on a Friday night when we come home from work and we're both in a bitchin' mood and we're like, yeah, let's have a drink that's an experience that could give that provides happiness and that's a situation where you should be drinking but coming home on a Tuesday and just being like well tired I'm gonna lay down and watch a show on Netflix and drink alcohol like it's not the same thing sorry I'm going super slow probably riding like an idiot so anyway, I think I'm going to stop drinking during the week period, and I'm just going to keep it on the weekends. And uh, I think I'm probably going to cut out beer for the most part. Because actually back in like December, maybe November even, we stopped drinking beer entirely and just switched to hard alcohol. It actually felt better doing that. Yeah, without the beer, I've actually lost weight. Or maybe bloat. I don't know. I just know that... Drinking a bunch of beer doesn't make me feel physically as good. But I've been on a rampage trying different whiskeys and it's been a blast. 
trying a lot of scotch whiskeys and a few Irish whiskeys. Not very much bourbon. I've been sticking to scotch. Because uh, I realize Scotland has a rich history of making whiskey. That's kind of where it comes from. And so I want to see what they're all up to over there. <laughs> Problem is a lot of it's really expensive. So I, uh, I've, been, I've made a list on my phone of all the stuff I want to try. And I've been sort of ranking it as I try it. Which has been kind of fun. Right here would be a good spot to camp. So down there in that wash is where I wanted to go. Um, honestly, I'm going to walk this first. Because if I get down into that sand and it ends up being a zero traction situation, it's going to be a bitch to get back up here. Well, if you're new to this channel, this is literally all I do. I ride around talking about whatever the hell I want, whether it's related to motorcycles or not. And then uh, we go camping. <laughs> oh yeah, there's plenty of space here to turn around. I can actually, this is pretty hard packed. I could probably actually ride on this easily. I'll show you the spot that I found on the GPS. These rocks might be a problem though. I didn't actually realize this was going to be so rocky. I thought it was going to be like sand. I wonder how heavily trafficked this is though. It's awfully rocky. Huh. Well, I might camp in that main area. Like right down here would be really nice. I got the shade and stuff. I just don't want like ATVs coming by me because <laughs> this is kind of treated as a road. I don't know, you guys are probably going to get mad at me for even camping in a wash. Maybe it's not even allowed. <laughs> kind of like camping in a road. But like right here is a good, I mean, if it wasn't so nasty looking. <sighs> Part of me just wants to camp up here. This actually seems like a nicer spot. I mean, that wash, I was expecting more sand. So I was expecting a better, more comfortable situation. I'm gonna move my 400 pound hog here. <laughs> With the weight and shit, it's probably 400 pounds. Whew. Hey, this is the fun of it though. Like I look at a map and I think, this is where I wanna go. And then I come out here and it looks totally different. And I realize how beautiful all the other places are that I'm around. Got these rocks up here. Got a killer view. This is a good area. I like this. I almost could have brought my hammock. There's some actual decent trees over here. Although I think I am going to use the tent. <laughs> I don't know. I'm scared of poisonous bugs. What if a poisonous bug comes and gets me? And then I die. That's always the worst case scenario, right? that put the tent right here my bike right there got a wonderful view of some mountains and when the sun starts going down I'll drink a little bit of whiskey
been so long since I've even set up my campsite, I kind of forgot how I do it. But I do normally put this drop cloth down. It's actually like a footprint for the tent, but I always put it down in front of my tent so I can have more space to sit without having to be in the dirt. I'm trying to do a little bit of shooting today once I get this campsite set up. I haven't shot my pistol in so long, and I think the only time I ever actually shoot it is when I'm out here. So, might as well go find a spot to shoot. I got these skewers that I was going to use to cook uh, vegetables tonight. I think I'm going to try to somehow turn them into targets. I don't know. We'll see. I really have no idea what I'm going to be shooting at. These are stupid targets. I'm going to try to hit a tiny stick. Blew that one right out of the ground. up my trash and head back to camp. <laughs> it's fun to shoot. I mean, next time I'm going to actually probably buy some targets so I can get real, figure out when I miss how far off I am. As opposed to just coming out here and shooting trash. I use these things for kindling probably. Well, I think I'm going to have a seat, probably read a book. In about an hour, I'll uh, get the food out start cooking. Oh, well, it looks like it might actually rain. There's some dark clouds over there. The weather said it wasn't going to rain. Um, but I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna run the risk of finding out without having this on. This is Monkey Shoulder Scotch Whiskey, which is named after a uh, stress injury that workers used to encounter, which I have not looked into, so I couldn't tell you exactly what kind of shoulder injury that is. It's kind of a cool name. <laughs> a little too hot. <laughs> um, but I had this in a bar once and then I followed it with a Maker's Mark and the Maker's Mark tasted like crap. <laughs> Maker's Mark is a good whiskey but this like actually has like a, a flavor to it. You know, like Maker's Mark literally tastes like wood. It tastes like oak. This tastes like just good. I really don't know how to tell you any other way. But yeah, this is one of those times where like drinking whiskey just is so satisfying. I love it. Camping. Ow.
Even if I'm alone, which I always am in these videos, I just love it camping. I think it's delicious and definitely chills me out after a day of riding and looking for campsites and stuff. And that steak is burned as fuck. <laughs> but yeah, over the past couple of months I've tried a lot of different whiskeys. <clears throat> Akintoshin was the first scotch I tried when I started going down this avenue of whiskey. Uh, it was good. It was real sweet. Tasted, uh, just tasted good. Kind of, uh, it was like really smooth. I think it's the only triple distilled scotch whiskey. And, um, I don't know. I don't really know why people would not want something to be triple distilled. I'm wondering if it just takes more flavor out of the whiskey, which might be why most Scottish distillers don't do it. I don't know. But Akintosh is pretty good. Uh, Laphroaig is one that I think everyone should try. <laughs> that was an amazing uh, experience. Peat smoke is used in the process of creating it, and it tastes... It is maybe the smokiest tasting thing I've ever had. Like, this isn't even going to come close to the flavor that I had in that, in that whiskey. It was like they bottled smoke, which is... I'm not a huge fan of smoke flavor, to be honest, but... I do think that was impressive. I don't know when I'll buy that next, but I'll definitely try it again sometime. If you take like a dab of Laphroaig and you rub it in your palm and you put your palms together and you smell your palms, it smells like like this. It literally smells like I pulled a stick out of this fire and I sniffed it. It's amazing. It's quite an achievement. I just want a little more heat on that steak. These uh, the sticks don't burn very consistently. They kind of go up all at once, which is why I ended up burning this steak. But yeah, this whiskey drinking journey's been good for me. Ugh. Other than that, I tried uh, Glenlivet. That's pretty good. And Glenlivet at Total Wine out here is uh, very cheap. It's like 30 bucks a bottle, which is cheap, because in most grocery stores, I think they're charging probably double that. Over Christmas I tried some Red Breast 12, which is um, probably the best Irish whiskey you can buy. And it was good. That, I'm definitely buying that again. That is second on my ranking of favorite whiskeys. Uh, that just tasted like a sugar cookie, man. Like if you look past the alcohol, obviously, it just kind of tastes like a freaking sugar cookie. Let's see what else do I have on my list. Grainstone, that's a Total Wine brand. That was pretty good, but I don't know if I would get that again. I tried Tomatin, which is, I think that's a scotch whiskey that's normally used in blends. So, uh, it's cheap. It's cheaper. It's like 23 or $24 for a bottle. That stuff's good. Maybe, it's kind of like Glenn Levitt, um, like Glenn Levitt's little brother, <laughs> if you want to compare it to that. It reminded me of the flavor of the Glen Levitt. Oh, let's see what else they have. Bushmills, because I'd never actually had Bushmills. Uh, that's at the, actually at the bottom of my list, because all of the ones I just mentioned are, are better than Bushmills. And that's about it. I had Old Forester, which uh, is the only bourbon I've had in the last couple months, and that tasted like brown sugar. That stuff is good. It was the, uh, I believe it was the 100 proof. And it was tasty. Remind me to put tongs on my list of items that I need. Oh yeah, this looks amazing. Yeah, a little overcooked. A little more than I would have wanted, but... I actually have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm sitting in the middle of the desert building a campfire and, uh, and eating steak. Oh, I won't eat this off the knife because that's cringeworthy to watch. Hope wherever you are it's getting a little warmer. 
Remember when I lived in Illinois, I always wanted to pull my bike out right when March rolled around. It would be like 35, 40 degrees, and I'd be like, oh, it's warming up. Maybe I can ride. Of course, if you've ever tried riding in 40 degrees, it's not easy. <laughs> you definitely need a few layers. Oddly enough, I've done that here a few times. Because I'll wake up from camping, it'll be like 35 out. But I've got thermal stuff, you know. I go, I go out with, like, the warmest clothes I've got. And so, <clears throat> if combined with that windshield on the bike, I end up not really having any issues. But, yeah, well, good luck. All you guys out there suffering. <laughs> While I'm out here drinking whiskey and eating steak. So, anyway, I'm going to finish eating this, finish drinking that. Then I'm going to lay down and finish reading my book, which I will admit, which I shouldn't admit this, <laughs> I am still reading Catcher in the Rye, because I only read when I'm camping, and the last time you saw me camping was the last time I went camping. <laughs> so maybe I'll finish the book tonight, who knows, probably not. <laughs>